Hello, hello, welcome to Quackle Open. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to play a simple but incredibly rewarding game called Hive. Now, Hive is a tile placement game with one very simple objective. The objective of the game is to place pieces down and move pieces around the hive in an attempt to surround your opponent's queen while keeping your queen from being surrounded. Now, in order to begin playing this game, the only thing you'll need is a relatively flat and open surface. It doesn't take much table space and a collection of these tiles. Now, each player will take their colored tiles, whether you're the black player or the white player. Now, beginning a game of Hive is incredibly simple. You'll take one of your tiles and place it down. Your opponent will do the same. They'll connect there in the middle, and this will begin what is called the hive. From this point on, the hive can only ever be moved or added to. It can never be broken. You'll go back and forth, each getting one action per turn. That action can be spent by placing a new tile. Every new tile you place can only be placed on similar color types. So for instance, this grasshopper here could not go in the middle here because it would be touching both a black and white tile. It would have to go on the outer edge so that it's only ever touching my colors when it's brought into play. You also have movement actions that are specific to each insect that you have. For instance, the ants can move anywhere along the outside of the board edge. So you'll go back and forth placing tiles. You're not allowed to move any tiles until your queen bee is placed down on the board. But the queen bee has to be played by the fourth round of the game. But once the queen bee is played, your other creatures are able to move and start shifting around the hive, each with their own specific movement abilities. Along with that, I can never break the hive. So no matter how my creatures can move, this can never be divided into two separate hives. The hive always stays as one whole. So for instance here, the ant, the mosquito, the queen bee, the grasshopper, and the spider all are currently unable to move because if any of them moved, their action would cause part of the hive to break off from the rest. Now let's go ahead and get into how these creatures move so that you can understand the flow of this game a little better. I'll set these over to the side and I'll go ahead and pull one of each creature here. So I have my unique pieces laid out here before me. These three at the bottom, the pill bug, the mosquito, and the ladybug are expansion tiles that can either be added to your game, or if you buy hive carbon, the mosquito and the ladybug will already come included. I'm going to teach you how to play with them and how they work, but if you're a brand new player, it is recommended that you only begin with the core creatures, the grasshopper, the beetle, the ant, the queen bee, and the spider. So I'll start by teaching you these core movement patterns. I'll start first with the queen bee. The queen bee can always move one space in any direction. So she could move around the ant here, she could move around the ant here, but only ever one space. Another important movement mechanic that affects the majority of the insects in this game is that the insects, if they're trapped, have to move in a way that allows you to slide their tile pieces in and out of a hole. So for instance, if the queen bee here was surrounded on five out of her six sides, she wouldn't actually be able to move out of this location because to do so, you'd have to shift these tiles next to her. If however, she was surrounded on four of her sides, she could slide out of this location and slide right back into that. In the same sense, if I wanted to get a piece inside this location, it would have to be the ladybug, beetle, or grasshopper, which are able to jump. I couldn't do it with the ant because the ant would have to force other tiles out of the way in order to move into that location. So the queen bee moves one space at a time. The ant is able to scurry around the perimeter of the board. So the ant can move as far and wide as it would like to go, as long as it has a clear location that it can slide into. So if the ant was gonna end its positioning here in this location, it wouldn't be able to fill this hole. Instead, it would stop on the outside like I demonstrated. The beetle, just like the queen, is only ever able to move one space at a time. But what makes the beetle unique is that he's able to clamber up on top of other insects. So the beetle here could move on top of this ant. It then could shift across the hive and rest here on top of the black queen. Now the important thing to note with the beetle, the beetle can drop down into gaps here. So he could fill up this hole if he was in position. And when the beetle is on top of another creature, he in effect replaces that creature beneath him. So this location would then be a white zone that would allow me to add other tiles next to it. And the queen bee underneath the beetle would be unable to move. The beetle would in effect have it trapped. Along with that, the player playing with the black tokens would not be able to add black tokens outside of that zone because that zone currently counts as a white zone. 
However, beetles are able to stack. So if the black player had a beetle here already, he could clamber up on top of my beetle and just start creating a tower to the sky. So that's how beetles work. Grasshoppers, like you would expect, are able to jump. So this grasshopper would be able to jump the whole way in a straight line over to the other end. Grasshoppers always jump in a straight line and they jump to the farthest point possible. However, grasshoppers cannot jump over gaps. So this grasshopper would jump and land right there in that gap. If this grasshopper was, let's say, here in this position, he would only be able to jump over the queen or over the ant and the beetle. He would not be able to jump over this gap and across to this other section. The spider always moves three spaces. So for instance, if the spider was here, he would move three spaces in either direction. So one, two, three. And that's where he'd come to rest. If he was moving from this location, he'd move one, two, and three. Now, just like the ant and the queen bee, the spider is not able to get into that space because he can't slide his tile in and out of that space comfortably. Now we come to the expansion content. So those are your core characters that you'll most typically start out learning the game with. And then you can start adding in the expansion content to add quite a different level of variety to your game. We'll start here with the mosquito. The mosquito is going to copy the action of any creature it's touching, whatever color that creature is. So if this mosquito was here against the queen bee and this ant, the mosquito could either be an ant and scurry anywhere around the board it would like to go, or it could be a queen bee and move one space at a time. If it was here next to this beetle, the mosquito could act as a beetle and actually come up top here and traverse until it dropped back down. The ladybug goes up twice and down once. So in this location, the ladybug would go one, two, and then drop down and fill that gap. The ladybug could also go from this location up two and down one. So the ladybug always climbs two and drops down by the end of this turn. It never stays on top like the beetle does. The pill bug's a very interesting creature. What it does is it allows you to lift and move a creature that you're sitting next to. So if my pill bug was here on the board, I could actually lift up this ant, place it on top of me, and then drop him off next to me as long as he's still connected to the hive. The same thing is true with my queen. So the pill bug is the only creature, it's the only tile that allows you to rescue your queen from being surrounded on five of the six sides. This pill bug here could pick up the queen, place her on top of him, and drop the queen down right next to him. So that's generally the mechanics of this game. Like I said, you always start off by placing one creature each, then you go back and forth, each person taking an action and moving around the board. Your queen has to be played by the fourth turn, and the object of the game is to surround your opponent's queen while preventing your opponent from surrounding your own. I hope you've enjoyed this Quackalope how-to. I hope I've helped you get hived to the table a little bit quicker. Now get out there and play some games.